when you're younger you just want people to follow you. I always took a guitar when I went on a mission. My music was my mission. Because that was my that was my gift. I started with a band called The Afflicted. And then all of a sudden we found ourselves gigging and in Deptford and, and places where skinheads were turning up. But we just didn't care because we weren't to play. And in, 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 in before we knew it, it was a, you know, like a British movement. Then John Peel got involved with the BBC Radio 1. He, he got us in for a little interview. We had a little interview with him out there. And he still decided to play our music regardless. And we were just saying, look, you just play as a band. But obviously you can't just do that, can you? Not in our world today. You're guilt by association, aren't you? I learned that in prison, you know. You can say to someone, oh, I shouldn't have been there. No, you shouldn't have been, because now they've got you. So later on I said, no, I'm on, I just want to do music. This is just getting a bit too heavy. Basically I then created the Afflicted Man. I thought it was good stuff, but it was, it was uh, really different to like thrash music. It was more sort of psychedelic punk, hippie punk I started to call it. Because of the drug abuse, I was always sort of like in a bit of a mess, you know what I mean? When I was younger, it was the acid that killed me. To me, it's like the, it's like the, the cream of the crop. If you're going to do something, let's do it properly. So that's it for about a month. And back then, they were like the orange sunshines and the pyramids, black pyramids and stuff. They were so stupid. You just didn't know where you were. I'd rather be bike on one. Or you get on a train and the train's not really a train. But it became insane. And so when the trip stopped, the damage didn't stop. Couldn't do drugs then, because I ran from them. So I became straight. But I wasn't straight, because I was always deformed, psychologically. You know, even when I got into the Christian faith, I thought, oh great, let's do it. Healing. Everyone keeps talking about healing. They give me some healing. You know, let's get some. Let's get some of that stuff. My brother was living in a tower block then. It was a bit rough, rough and ready around there. There's a guy called Greg, and he came to faith. But I didn't know that. And I turned up in all my punk gear. I remember being said to him, "I'm not him as well." And he started saying that this Jesus can heal you, can put you right. I'm so desperate for anything. Do you know what I mean? And I'll, I'll, I'll try anything. You know. So I said, well, okay then, well, how do you get this Jesus? And he said, you have to ask him into your life. You have to make it reality. So I thought, mm, okay. I said, if you're there, Jesus, come on in, let's have something, let's, let's get sorted. And I, I can only say that there was such an, an, an a luminous feeling on me, you know, that such something real was going on, that I felt like I'd, I'd become awakened by something more than I'd experienced before with anything really. So I went to the church, he said, and we was there 20 years. It was an interview for a job. It was high down prison. It was a category A prison at my time, now a category B, stroke C prison. And the governor then, they said you was the best. Uh, we, we recommend that you be the right one for the job because you understand the guy. I, I did enjoy the job. I found it extremely satisfying. I was helping the guys take Bible books, literature all around to everybody. I became, I was started as an assistant chaplain, but they took away the role as an assistant. It's more me in there because I, I think that's what Gnostic teachings about you as a person. And I, I realized that I was one and had been all my life really. You know, and I, I've always been a bit compulsive. I don't know why. If I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna go and do it. Albania, you know, just 
got on a plane and went. Uh, because in 91, 92, 91, they started to open the borders, whereas before that it was a communist country. It still was a communist country, but it was start to break down. And uh, no one was allowed in the country for, for over 50 years or so. We didn't know where we were going to go. We ended up going to a doctor's house that invited us in to stay. And then we said, well, we've come because we understand these prisons that no one's gone into for many years. And he said, that's true. He said, well, let me have a little word. So I happened to be the right person. And then he said, look, what I'll do, give me a couple of days. If we can get you in the prison, we approved democracies coming to the country. So we went in to the prison and then I started singing some songs and then we gave out Bibles and stuff like that. But that opened up Albania, Northern Ireland, Maze prisons, all the prisons around Britain I was going to, and the Middle East, Czechoslovakian prisons. No one had visited them places for years. There was a chap called Bill Hamilton, a BBC reporter that was doing a program on the race for souls in Albania. So we thought, right, well, we're doing work out. So my mate Kevin got in touch with me and they said, yeah, we'd be interested in coming to the prison because you're doing it as a, you know, to reach souls, to reach people for Christ, if you like. So we said, okay, let's, let's have some of that. And then uh, we arranged it, set it up. They put us on the BBC News, so it's quite nice. Everybody, could come out and watch us perform, and they did, and it was quite daunting to have a couple of hundred guys in front of you, especially I didn't really know a lot. I always took the guitar when I went on mission, and that's important, because me, my music was my mission, because that, that was my gift. So whatever I could offer, at least I could give them a sound of something that everyone can understand, music. this following there's no gain it's all give and that's the doors that we're all going to be offered in life one says enter this door and you're going to be safe or you can go this door but you fall off the edge and you're gone forever all my friends have done that door broke into chemists and overdosed overdosed on motorways overdosed in their houses overdosed in toilets in Piccadilly gone, dead, they chose the wrong door, opened the right one, faith, hope and love is the answer. And that's what I learned, honesty, if you can't be honest, forget it, don't come, just be real. Okay.